book of 2 Timothy chapter 1. I was preparing and the Lord led me to one thing and then between last night and today, he led me here. And so I pray that whatever is said tonight, it will make some sort of sense. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Whenever I'm at the Solid Rock Church, we always say, let the church say amen. So let the church say amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And as a way of call and response, it's a thing I do at my church when I ask the question, can I push it? Y'all got to say push it. Can I push it? Right, I need y'all to help me push today. Help me push. Help me push. Heed the word of God beginning at verse number five. When I call to remembrance the unfined faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in my remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Let me recapitulate the first sentence of verse number six. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee. That's enough. You may be seated. In the presence of our good and gracious God. Amen. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance. That thou stir up the gift of God. Which is in thee. The grass withers and the flowers do fall. But the word of our God do stand forever. Yes, I want to talk this evening from these words of preaching. It's in you. Oh, it's in you. Do me a favor, look at your neighbor with the mask on. I know we socially distance and spread out, but just look at them, point at them, smile at them, don't scare them, and say, neighbor, neighbor. the pastor going to preach about it. He'll send you. Look at somebody else and just say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, he'll send you. Give the Lord a hand of praise for his word. Yes, sir. My brothers and my sisters, there are several traits and things that we can inherit from our parents. Mm -hmm. Things such as their antics and attitude, things such as their cooking skills and cultural skills, yes. things such as their business and their beauty, things such as looks, hobbies, and etc. Many individuals can attest to the reality that they have inherited different things from their mom, their dad, and their grandparents. During special meals such as Thanksgiving and Christmas, many of us have inherited traditions that stem from many years that instills family values. It's customary that every week that the family would gather together on Sunday to appreciate and acknowledge the blessings that God has bestowed upon you. But most assuredly, these things are great, these things are good, yeah, but the greatest thing to inherit and the greatest thing to have is salvation. I am convinced and content to know that the greatest thing that can be passed down from generation to generation is Jesus Christ. Somewhere down the line you can attest and affirm that you would not be where you are if it had not been for Jesus. Some of you can testify that I just don't know how in the good, 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 good work, I would have made it without the Lord on my side. I thank God for loving parents and loving grandparents that believe that as long as you're in their house, you will serve the Lord. And as you grow in Jesus, you begin to see that your life has changed. Your life is no longer the same. That your life has changed because Jesus has came inside of your heart. Is there anybody that could thank God that when Jesus came in your life, you don't talk the way you used to talk. 
That when Jesus came in your life and you don't walk the way that you used to walk. That when Jesus came into your life, there was a change inside of your life. Yeah. And as we walk into the dialogue and discourse of our current pericope, we must understand that the Apostle Paul is extending greetings and gratitude towards his son in the ministry, Timothy. He's grateful, he's thankful, and he's prayerful. He's grateful, thankful, and prayerful. He's grateful, thankful, and prayerful. Although he is separated from Timothy, he still has joy. Even though he's chained up in a Roman dungeon, he still has joy. Even though he's waiting an execution, he still has joy. May I drop this on somebody? Don't allow your current predicament or current situation to stop you from having joy. You still need to have joy. You may not have money in your pocket, but you still got joy. Your health may not be the way it should be, but you still have joy. Your hair may not be on fleet like it should be, but you still need to have joy. On today's message, here is the sermon in one sentence, and here it is. Remember that what is deposited inside of you will help you for your journey that lies ahead. Yeah, yeah. You just missed your shot. Remember that what is deposited inside of you will help you for the journey that lies ahead. Yeah. Can I push it on tonight? Yeah. If you want to know that it's in you, you got to first of all understand that faith must be in seal. The church say faith, faith must be in seal. Faith, faith must be in seal. It's right there in the text in verse number five. It says, when I call to remember the unfined faith that is in me, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. One day, Black Baptist is going to shout off of reading the Bible. Now, when Paul talks to Timothy, he recalls how Timothy came into the faith. He remembers how on his second missionary journey in Lystra, he met a young man who decided to come to Jesus and devote his life to serving God. His mother and grandmother were believers. However, his daddy was not because he was a Greek and yet Paul encourages him that what's inside of him is because of his mother Lois and his grandmother Eunice. His mother and grandmother had an effect, had an influence, led him to Jesus and helped him to be grounded in the faith. Let me say that one more time. His mother and grandmother used their influence, used what they on here, led him to Jesus and helped him to be grounded in the faith. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, sometimes the greatest gift that you can give to a child is not a pair of J's or the bar. The greatest gift that you can give to a child is not an Xbox or a PS4. The greatest gift that you can give to a child is not a queer cash or any other commodity, but the And can I push it some more? 
And not only is my faith being sealed, but my, I'm going to tell you that if you want to know that it's in you, you got to understand that a flame must be ignited. Let the church say flame, flame. must be ignited. How in the world is that in the text? I'm glad you asked. Look at verse number six that says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou shalt that thou shalt the gift of God. Let me, let me drop. Let me stop. Timothy was a gift, valuable, and anointed man of God. Yeah, yeah. But here's the, here's the tension in the text, Pastor Macon. Here's the tension in the text, Pastor Robinson. Here's the tension in the text, Pastor Man. Yes, the tension is, although Timothy was a martyr, he suffered with timidity. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Timidity because he had a heavy and hard responsibility yeah. of being an overseer or pastor of God's work in and the larger earth. Let me drop this. I discovered that you can be the head of a CEO. You can be the principal of a school, manager of a business, owner of a major firm or corporation, or pastor a leading and large church, and you can still be timid. Timothy lack courage. He lacked bones. But his spiritual father told him, you got to be bold. I don't know about you, but I've got to say this. You cannot play it safe. You cannot be weak and wimpy in the car. You got to be strong and straightforward. One thing I told a young preacher that just became a pastor, I told him that if you going to say what God
lost his fire. Yeah. Timothy lost his passion. I need to ask somebody, what do you do yeah. when the fire has gone out? Yeah. What do you do when you lost your passion? What do you do when you lost your purpose? What do you do when you sit at your pew and you say, Lord, I'm tired of sitting here and I'm suffering inside. Sad to say there are moments within the cross and crucible of ministry where there are so many people that are burned out. Burned out to the point that you frustrate with going to church. Burned out to the point that you got tension, stress, and your man is here hell saying, God, don't want nothing to do with me, but let me tell somebody that the goal ministry, the goal of business, the goal of anything, is not to burn out and wear out, but to burn up. I wish I had myself a witness. Y'all miss y'all shouting. That the goal is not to burn out, but you got to burn up. In other words, when Paul told Timothy to shut up, he said, don't you let your flame burn out. Let your flame burn up. Because what's on the inside will help you on the outside. And I want to tell you, your church of living God, that God wants to use you. God wants to do a great work in you. God got some great things in store for you. But when you get to a point that you're going to get get to a point where you're going to burn out and you're tired of that nigga, tired of that person, tired of that life, tired of everything, let me tell you what you do. When you get to a point that you're going to burn out,
in our lives. We all have fearful moments. Come on now. Truth be told, if I walked into somebody's house, your cousin in the house, you'll probably go in the house and you'll see a flying roach or a big old spider. You're going to politely walk out that door because you got a fear. Some of you cannot go to the top of Borkin right now because you got a fear. Some of you right now cannot go to the Empire State Building because you got a fear. Some of you can't even go to the ocean because you got a fear. All I'm saying to you, all of us at some point got to admit that we have fears. Fears of the known and the unknown. Fears on how we're going to make ends meet and pay our bills. Fear on how we're going to get out of high school, start a degree, and see the next commencement after commencement. Fear of how we're going to get home while our police are behind us. Fear of how crooked politicians are finding a way to suppress the vote and find a way to, 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 to keep racism systematic. Fear after how in the world is the church going to survive after COVID-19. But I want to tell somebody that the best way to deal with fear is to remember that fear does not come from God. And say, God didn't give me fear. I'm not going to work. Because the Bible said the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You know, I have the fear since God gave me the greatest gifts according to this text. He gave me power, love, and a sound mind. You can't do this on your own. But you got what it takes to go forward because it's inside of you. When you feel weak, you got his power. Whenever you preach and word, you got his power. Whenever you got to cast out demons out of somebody, you got his power. Because God has given us his power. But there comes a time, sometimes you get mad at your neighbor. Sometimes you get mad at a family member. And it caused y'all to fall out like two bad names. But I want to tell somebody, you got to love them. You got to show selfless and sacrificial love to them. You got to love them when they talk about you. Love them when they malign your name. Love them when they can't get everything right. Keep on loving them. But not only have you given your power, not only have you given your love, but I want to close in here tonight to say he's given you a sound mind. A sound mind that you can control yourself. But when you got the Lord in control of yourself, you don't have to cuss as much as you did last year. When you got the Lord to control yourself, you don't have to talk about what they said and what they did. When you got a sound mind, you can be able to say, I accept whatever they said. Because it ain't about them anymore. Because I got faith that everything is going to be all right. I came to close tonight to tell somebody that whatever you need is inside of you. You know when I went to Lawson State College for a small second, there was a sign that was on their billboard. And that sign said that whatever you need, it's all here. And that's all I want to tell somebody tonight. That whatever you need, it's in Jesus. You may need a way out of no way. It's in Jesus. You may need bread when you're hungry, but it's in Jesus. You may be thirsty and you need some water. It's in Jesus. You need somebody. You can call on Jesus. Because he is the road of sharing. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He's the stone hewn out of a mountain. He is a ladder upon a high mountain. He is the stone that the builders rejected. 
said uh, that became the chief cornerstone. Is there anybody here that know who I'm talking about? Moses Rod, the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Job said uh, he's a war horse born in the valley. David said uh, he's a battle axe in the time of a battle. Walk you up, started you on your way. 
Reason number six, he woke you up, started you on your way. Reason number seven, he woke you up, started you on your way. Reason number eight, he woke you up, started you on your way. Reason number nine, he woke you up, started you on your way.
You don't have to come down front and just step out because God will meet you where you are. Amen. 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 We thank God that everyone here knows him in your life. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Which you have been blessed on tonight. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful blessing to know that God is still able. Amen. 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 I would dare not leave on tonight without giving Pastor Robinson, amen, the opportunity to have a word. Amen. 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 We thank God. Come on, put your hands together for Pastor Robinson. Amen. It's just good to meet someone that you didn't know before you got. Amen. God bless you. We want to take personally invite you back to be with us. Amen. 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 We thank God for each and every one of you. We're not going to hold you. We just thank God that we know that we want you to stay focused. We thank God for that. Stay focused. Stay focused. Keep looking to the hill for what's trying to get him. Stay focused. This is a stay focused revival. We'll be doing this. We, 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 we spoke it and said for the next 90 days, we want you to stay focused. Stay focused on what, Pastor? Stay focused on God. Stay focused on God. As you look to Him, He'll show you what you need to be doing. Amen. 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 We want to thank God for you on tonight. You truly have blessed our soul. You truly have spoke from the depths of your heart. Would you have any final words? Amen. Amen. All over the building, I want you to just bow. Father God, we thank you right now. Father, we thank you for the experience. We thank you for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you with our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and most of all, with our hearts have felt. Father, we thank you right now for allowing us to step where we've never stepped before, seen what we've never seen before, and felt what we never felt before and for this brand new mercies, brand new healing, brand new blessing that you sent our way. Father, we ask right now for all these men and women of God, bless them, God. Bless Pastor Robinson's ministry. Bless Pastor Megan's ministry. Bless Pastor Anthony's ministry. Father, make their ministry elevated and lifted up, leaving you in the midst. And Father, as I close tonight, I ask you to lift the ministry here at First Baptist Church as it said. Father, lift me up, God, that I'm able to continue to stand on your word, preach your word, teach your word, and live your word. Father, we want to stay focused on you. We'll never take our eyes off of you. And no matter how high we get, we'll still be looking up to you. As we leave this place and go our separate ways, God, we ask you to keep God and strengthen us until you see fit for us to meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.